John Deere here and today we're going to be Embroidery Medics. We are going to look at a design that is not registering properly. That means that there's actually space between two stitches where they're supposed to line up. It's actually separating. Now I'm going to show you how to fix it but I'm going to also show you why it's happening in the first place. So stay tuned. Now before we get started, make sure you subscribe to John Deere's Embroidery Legacy so that you'll be notified every time we release a new video. So we're going to look at an example of a design that was sent in by one of our uh, Facebook uh, subscribers and the design actually did not register properly when it was being sewn on a very fine loose knit material. Now I saw it online and I right away thought this is more an issue of how it was digitized over how it was hooped or what stabilizer that was there. So they sent it in and we're going to take a look at this design, see what small changes we can make and try to get it so that it'll register properly when it sews out. Now I had them send me the original file that they created in the EMB format and I called it up full screen. But before we start to dissect it, let's go to a picture of the finished results. And this really does show us what happened after it was sewn because what you see on screen and what you get when you're done sewing are two different things. And I can see that there's gapping here, 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 right here. And if I look really closely, I can see some little issues here and I can see a little bit of issues there. So I'm going to definitely try to clean this up a little bit. Uh, if I look at stitch angles, I can see that the stitch angle here is going kind of that direction. And this one is going the same direction and this one's going the same direction. I usually would not try to have these two colors go the same direction as the first. These ones are okay and this one is going horizontally. So I have a few things I'm gonna fix. Actually, if I look up here as well, these all look like they're going the same direction. So I'm gonna be changing some of the directions. I'm gonna be looking at the underlay. I'm gonna be looking at how the fills were actually pathed. And I know I'm gonna be adjusting some of the nodes around the white so that we adjust for these gapped areas here and here and all those places that are reacting poorly. So let's go to the software now and we'll take a slow redraw through the design and see what's happening. So if I see this fill come up, it looks like it is doing actually an edge run first and then a uh, tatami underlay. Now I'll probably change the sequence of that to be honest because it makes a little more sense to me for the uh, tatami to be first and then the edge run. It will cause less pull in the design. And then I can see the stitch angle going down on this and it's going one angle and they've actually uh, you know, carved holes in for the large area where the face is, but right at those ears, there's actually those two small little areas in the ears here where they've actually carved holes. Now I'm going to get rid of those because actually carving holes in those areas, uh, it's going to basically add more stitches and promote, you know, misregistration. Now I have all of the feet that are going down, that little border around the outside. I'm gonna make sure everything's okay there as well. And then in the face, actually, I can see that again there is underlay, which is fine, but I can see that they've carved holes for the face. And I'm definitely gonna get rid of those holes. They're way too small to be in an area like that. It's gonna cut down on the stitches. And the stitch angles, for the most part, I can see a little bit of issues with that. I'm gonna go in very quickly, and let's just stop this and I'll just call up the stitch angles. If I look at this one and hit the H key, this one's at 45 degrees, this one's at 45 degrees, and this one's at 45 degrees. These are opposing, this would be 135 and 135, and I'm gonna probably change the angle of this big fill from 45 to 60, and if I look at this one up here, this tiny little one, that one's set at 50 degrees, so it's not much difference than 45, but if I look at this one, this one's set at 45 as well. So I'll probably have the two whites go in the same stitch angle, and then I'll adjust this one in the pink to go a different direction. So first thing I'm gonna do is take that big fill, and let's move that to, let's say, I can even go 60 degrees. So I'm going from 45 to 60 degrees, and I'm gonna let, wow, okay. Um, that is actually something that I have seen before. 
And it's uh, kind of ironic that it happened during a presentation of Embroidery Medic, but this is something, and I have no idea, it's one of those little an anomalies that I've seen happen before where I get a design from somebody, and as soon as I move one of the nodes, like even that, I move the angle or I moved a node, as soon as I touch one of the nodes, the whole object completely disappears. And I have really not a been able to ever figure out why it happens and to be honest I don't have the time to go back and ask the person to recreate the steps that they went through to make that happen but it is a very isolated and special circumstances I've tried to save out the file in a previous version call it back in the same thing still happens so in a way we're going to take this as a learning experience because I'm going to have to change my whole game plan on the fly now to make this work, I'm going to have to really go in and redigitize this fill. Uh, and to be honest, it won't take long. It'll be almost as long as me correcting it in the first place. But I'm going to have to change this. And the first thing I want to do, actually, is I'm going to mark down the stitch count. So we have 18,584 stitches. I do that whenever I start an edit so I can see if my stitch count has gone up or down. 99% of the time it goes down. I also am going to remember that that was a 45 degree stitch angle because I'm going to be changing that afterwards. Uh, I know the default in Hatch is not 45. Uh, I'm just going to grab this one actually up here because I don't want to redigitize that little area, but I'm going to make sure that if I go to 45, that same strange little thing is not going to happen. So let's just slide that over. I'm going to make sure I get it so that it goes right to 45. Okay, so that feels okay. Uh, oh, it went back to 50. Let's go to 45 again and let go. Okay, we are at 40. Oh, it's at 50 again. Wow, okay, so again, here's another strange little thing. And I gotta be honest, it didn't disappear, but for something that small, okay, bad reshape warning. Okay, we are not gonna touch that one. We're gonna leave that one alone. Let's hit the H key again, and I'm gonna zoom in with my zoom box. And I'm going to take a look at this, and I'm gonna grab this and move it. And let's see if it actually moved. Yes, it did. Okay, so I don't have to redigitize that little section, but I am going to move these points, and we are going to keep it. Ah, I see why. Okay, actually, I know why this has happened now. This is something, believe it or not, that I love about digitizing and editing designs is it's almost like you get to play Sherlock Holmes. You get to look at an object and figure out why all these strange things are happening. So let's take this one to 45 here. And nope, does not want to change it. Okay, we're going to, oh, that one did change it. Okay, so let's grab that one. And let's grab this one. Okay, we're making a little bit of progress. Bad shape warning. Let's get rid of that. Okay, well, that, that will do it. We're going to leave that one exactly as is. I can live with that tiny little object being that direction. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab the whole design and I have a feeling things might be grouped together, and yes, they were. So I'm going to ungroup everything right now. So now it's all ungrouped. I'm going to turn off my true view so I can see the design on screen. And I am going to, let's see here, I'm going to turn my shapes on just so that I can see some shapes as I'm going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that first color. I don't want to grab that one. I want to leave that one alone, but I'm going to grab that first color. Now, I'm going to have to redigitize this object, and the best way to redigitize it without having the original artwork is to convert it to a running stitch. And I'm actually going to change that running stitch to a turquoise color. And now, when I come in and turn the true view on, I can see my turquoise right there. And if I want to, I can also come in here and turn off the true view again. Now my shapes are on, which might make it a little bit hard to see, so I'm gonna get rid of the shapes. And now I'm gonna zoom into my six to one scale. So I'm gonna go six to one. And I'm gonna choose that original Floriani white color that they had chosen, and I'm gonna come right up over here. Now keep in mind I'm gonna be changing the stitch direction to probably about 60 degrees. So when I go to my digitized close shape, and I'm going to choose a fill stitch, and I know that they had actually fill number 47, or 37 I think it was, so we're going to go and choose the same fill that they had chosen, and I'm going to go to, uh, I'll do the underlay afterwards, and now that I have the fill chosen, I have the color chosen, I'm going to put my first point right there. 
Okay, and then I'm going to very, very quickly come in and redigitize this shape and try to get it as close as possible to the original. And there we went off into space a little bit, but I brought it back. And we'll just continue right here, point, 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 curves and straights, making sure that I retain the shape. There's a straight, here's a curve, comes into a straight. Let's back up because that one was off ever so slightly. And I'll just continue to go around here and do a straight point, curve, 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 straight, curve, curve. Now here's where I'm going to start making some changes. I'm going to actually, let's go back a couple. I'm going to go straight, straight, actually let's go back here, curve, straight, straight, and then I'm going to start curving around, straight, straight, and then I'm going to continue on. I am actually overcompensating on that area where it's separated. And I know that coming up right here, this area was separating as well. So I'm going to make sure that I overcompensate. And I'm going to come in here and go further down and again overcompensate into the next fill. I'm going to be changing directions of the fill so I don't have to really worry. Backspace. And here we go. Go all the way around. And let's go back here. Was not expecting this at all, guys. This was a nice surprise <laughs> to have something like this actually happen with a design that is not yours. That's where editing designs is always fun. We're going to overcompensate for this one to allow for that pull compensation. Okay, come over here, continue on, come straight in to a straight, go back to a curve. And we'll just continue to go around this object and try to very quickly simulate the shape. Now I'm going to come here. And this one, I'm just going to follow the lines exactly. Straight, curve, 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 straight, curve, curve. This one again, right to a point. And then I'm going to continue to put points down, but I'm going to overcompensate. And I'm going to overcompensate all the way on the inside here a little bit to adjust for the pull and push of the design. And that should just about do it. And let's hit the enter. There we go. Now we actually have a shape. But we want to make sure that we do a shape in the inside. So I'm going to digitize a hole. And I'm pretty much going to follow what they had before because that one was pretty much, pretty much good. There was no separation that I saw in that part of the object so we'll just pretty much copy this exactly the way it was and get back almost to the beginning and let's enter twice and there it's gone so there I've redigitized the shape now what that means is when I go to my true view is it is now at the very end of the object so if I go over to colors and I grab that last object that I just did and I move it to the very beginning of the sewing order. So let's go right here. Now I can see that that color is done. And this one, which was the colors that I converted to uh, running stitches, I'm just going to delete all of those at the same time. So now what I've done is I've created a new fill that has all of my you know, overlaps that are built in there. And let's cross our fingers and go to the H key and let's change the angle of this. And the other one I said was 45, so let's change this one to 60. And hooray, okay, we are, we are making uh, real progress now. So when I do this, I'm gonna make sure that I move the stop right up to here because I know it continued on. And let's go to objects. And if I look at the sequence, there it's doing that object there. Then it goes to that object there. And then it continues on. I do see that there is a little bit of a problem though. Let's go to the H and let's just grab this one right here. And I'm going to start my design right down here. And then let's go to this one and this one. And now I can see that we are all lined up. I want to make sure that I have a smooth sewing order in this design. So I have adjusted for all of those compensation issues and I think that that's going to be much better. It's going to be registration correct now. If I really do look at this and I start fine tuning it, I can see that there's a little bit of over. 
Actually, I think I see something else that's a little bit strange. I didn't notice this until just now, but if I grab this object, I'm gonna move this one down a little bit, just so that I don't see it overlap outside of those pieces. I can change this one to a straight. But if I look at my original artwork, and let's just go here and let's uh, erase all the ink. Yeah, that is really strange. If you notice here, it looks like the fill stitches are sewing on top of the outlines. I can see it actually on the top, but on the actual design, if I look at it, they are underneath. So this whole thing has become a gigantic mystery, but that's okay. We just want to make sure that we get a good finished result when we're done. Now very quickly, I'm going to also look at stitch angles again. I have my angle there, and that one I think we determined was a 45. I have this one here, which now we changed to a 60, so it's opposing. This was a 45 right here. I think this was a 135. These two were almost the same, so I'm going to actually change that angle, and let's do that one at like a 65, so that's going to change it slightly. That way there'll be no bleeding between the two. Actually, you know what? Let's keep it where it was, because I think that actually will be better if we do keep it at let's 42 so that's going to be an opposing angle now if I look at this object here this is one I'm really going to fix up a little bit I'm going to actually leave it the same angle but I'm going to take all of those holes that I see there all these tiny little holes that are in the design and let's get rid of that completely so I've grabbed all of those objects and they are now gone so there's no longer any holes within that fill now if I think of a couple other little things to do, I want to change some of the sequence of the underlay. I'm going to actually go to my underlay on this, and I'm going to actually do a tatami first. And the stitch spacing is at 3, which I think is a little better. I think it was set at 2 before, but I'm going to keep a tatami with an edge run second. And then if I look at this angle right here, let's escape from that one, and I'm going to grab, let's see here, let's go down a little bit. This one right here, I'm going to look at that one. That is an edge run with a tatami. Let's flip the order of that as well. And then these, I could probably flip the order of all of these at the same time because I'm pretty sure they'll all be the same. So let's do a tatami with an edge run on the other side. And let's do this one as well. So tatami with edge run. And I think that'll give us cleaner, crisper lines as we move forward. So we've essentially come in, we have changed all of the uh, stitch angles, we've changed the underlay, we've basically redigitized a certain part of the design so that we know it's going to sew out better. Now if I look at the stitch count now, we're actually at 17,702. It was at 18,584, so we've definitely cut down some of the uh, stitches in the design. I think we're going to have much better, well I can guarantee we're going to have much better registration within the, in the design, and it's going to sew out a lot cleaner than it did before. So just to verify what we've done, I'm going to go to the player and we'll quickly go through and see the changes that we made. I did a tatami underlay first and then an edge run and then I changed the direction of the fill. I made sure that I adjusted pull compensation for any of the objects that were going to go over top, which is right here with the feet. I have the hands, I have the satin stitch going over top of the fill stitch. For some reason it went underneath before, that was a big mystery. Then for the face, I got rid of all the holes within the face because it's going to cut down the stitch count. And then it does the uh, face uh, details on there. It does a little bow at the top. I change the stitch angle, do the details there, and it finishes off the design. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is going to give better results than the first time. And again, we've cut out almost 900 stitches on the design, eight or 900 stitches. And you know, anytime I can cut out eight or 900 stitches, I know that I've done a good thing. But the most important thing is the registration is going to be correct. Well, that was a little unexpected, but I love a good mystery. And I think that another patient survived. So until next time, we'll see you soon. Hi, John Deere here, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like down below. To join the legacy now, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video. It's no mystery, award-winning embroidery is our history.